machine learning lab class. So today we will do the order a bit different. As we uh, noted already, the students from Leipzig have already heard the general introduction to the labs. So I will start with uh, introducing the first exercise sheet, which is due on November the 16th. So Monday in two weeks. Um, and uh, after that, I will do the general lab introduction specific to the Weimar students. The Leipzig students may leave now or they may stick around. But you should note if you hear anything later that contradicts what you've heard last week, then uh, stick to what you've heard last week. What I will tell in the second part will apply mainly to the Weimar students. But uh, most of that is actually in common for both universities. So to start with, I will show you the exercise worksheet. So hopefully this is visible now. No, no, I think it was the wrong one. Let me start again. This is what I wanted to show. Okay. So um, I will start from here. I will go into more detail on this course page later. We have done this for the Leipzig students last week, but um, only quickly to show you where you can find the link to the exercise worksheet. This will always be next to the lab class. This is how it looks like on the Weimar page, and this is how it looks like on the Leipzig page. There's a linked worksheet for every exercise sheet number, so the first one is there now. The other ones will appear as the course goes on. The exercise worksheet itself is a PDF. Uh, with multiple individual exercises on it. Um, this week we will have, uh, oh yes, please do start the recording again, Martin. I have restarted the recording. Ah, perfect. Thank you for the hint non nonetheless. Yes, I we, we have to remind ourselves to do this occasionally because yeah. uh, I, I was already almost too late. <laughs> perfect. Okay, um, right, so we have six exercises total this time. Um, in terms of lecture content that they apply to, I should probably also sh quickly show this. You probably know our uh, lecture notes page. Otherwise, for the new people, I will show it how to get here again later also in more detail. But just so that you have seen it, uh, this first uh, exercise sheet will cover what will be covered in the um, course uh, sessions in the first two weeks. So that is this introduction part. Uh, this uh, unit regression from the second part and the first half of this concept learning unit from the second part. The first exercise is a general question on machine learning where you have to define some terms and sketch some examples for them. If you paid attention to what the professor explained earlier, you might already be able to answer this. Same for the second question. This uh, refers to this uh, picture on the specification of learning problems that we saw. And um, here you are supposed to think through this with a concrete uh, example of a learning problem and think about what concept corresponds to what symbol in the picture. And in the second question, you are asked to do this again um, with respect to the exercise six on this worksheet, which I will get to later, where um, you are actually already doing something with, with respect to the symbols in this picture. And you are supposed to think about uh, which ones these are. The third exercise is on linear regression. This you haven't heard yet if this is your first time taking this class. Uh, you are uh, supposed to solve a simple regression problem by hand here. So this is the entire data set for this problem, which is uh, four cars characterized by two different attributes, age and mileage, and the um, dependent variable, which is the stopping distance when braking. The fourth and fifth exercise relate to the concept learning part of the lecture. Uh, number four is about hypothesis spaces and uh, their sizes and how they can be computed. This will hopefully become clearer from the literature that you will get and from the lecture slides. The exercise five is on the find S algorithm, which is the first concept learning algorithm that we will talk about. Um, yeah. The sixth exercise is the first programming exercise for that class. We are marking these on the exercise sheets with this P symbol. And um, before I get into what specifically you are supposed to do here, I will briefly introduce the general problem, the general learning problem that we are dealing with. This is also 
briefly explained in the exercise description here. So as you all know, there are many different kinds of web pages. So if I let's say type cat food into a search engine, I get a bunch of web pages that contain this, uh, this query. And uh, of these, there are pages that want to sell you things, or there are pages that might um, give you information about cat food in this case. If you scroll down far enough, you might uh, find ones where people discuss about cat food or that recommend specific brands or these kinds of things. Figuring out what type of web page a given search result is, is for example, it's important to search engines to give you better search result pages. So for some queries that you type in, it might be pretty um, obvious what type of pages would you want so that buy cat food instead. Obviously the search engine should prioritize pages that sell cat food. If I type uh, rather cat food reviews, the pages, uh, the search engine should prioritize pages that contain information or discussion about cat food. And this applies to any kind of uh, pages that you might search about. So um, this is uh, in essence the learning problem that we are going to deal with in the programming exercise for this uh, for this lab class all semester. Given some arbitrary web page, in this case uh, given by its HTML code, we want to automatically decide what category of web page it is. And um, in the exercise, we have decided to go with six different basic kinds of web pages, pages that allow the visitor to discuss with others, pages that suggest other pages to the visitor, pages that get information from the visitor, pages that sell or buy from the visitor, pages that entertain the visitor, or pages that, in, that inform the visitor. So we want to classify pages by their primary function. Your first uh, task in um, doing this exercise will be to help us to generate a data set for this purpose. So what we want is a set of web pages where we know um, what the correct category is out of these six kinds. And for, to that end, um, in task 6a here, you will- If I may interrupt very quickly, pages. Michael, uh, ju just, yeah. just a very quick interruption. This exercise is not for you to generate data for us. We can generate data ourselves. Um, that's, not a, that's not our problem. Our problem is that you need to learn this whole difference between the real world and the model world. And that means we, you need to experience the difficulties involved in actually coming up with um, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the ideas, the features that are necessary to distinguish between these six different classes. So uh, in order for you to experience this, we will give you web pages and ask you to decide where they belong and then to uh, uh, try and model them properly. Exactly. So the purpose of these um, labs in essence is to prepare you to do machine learning in the real world. And when you want to do that, sometimes you're lucky and there's already a perfectly fine data set that you can just use for the problem that you're interested in. And sometimes you are not that lucky and you have to generate your own data set. And in that case, you start exactly here. And that's why we decided also to start here for the, for the lab classes. So in order to do this, um, we have prepared a little tool that you will use to annotate web pages. You can find that on your respective Moodle page. Uh, let me quickly see, this is the Weimar one. This, uh, the link to the tool is in the description of the first exercise. This is how it looks like on the Leipzig page. So there's always this link right here. I will now open this. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I see the confusion here. We are using the term exercise for two different things. I think that is a mistake we might want to correct. So um, on the course homepage, what um, this exercise one refers to is this whole PDF with these six uh, in, in different problems. And what exercise one to five on the Moodle page refers to is uh, these exercises on the sheet named uh, numbered one, two, three, or five and so on. Yes, we will change that. That's uh, confusing. That's that class for the entire exercise. Yeah. 
good idea. Yeah, let's do it like that. So um, coming back to the um, annotation tool, the first thing it asks you to do is enter your group number. So your group number is what you chose in Moodle. For those of you who haven't been introduced to the concept of group numbers yet, I will do so later. For now, I will just put some valid group number here. And then um, you can start the annotations. Oh, why is it not showing the web page? This might be a question for Yannick. Um, that's ah, okay. here. Maybe uh, sometimes okay, you have a delay never mind. I just, the picture. I just reloaded and it works. That's fine. OK, so um, what you see here first is the group number you selected at the top here. Um, in the left side of the screen, you see a screenshot from a, uh, of a web page. You can also click on that to see it in uh, uh, larger. On the right side, you have the basic instructions for this task, which are to first look at each of the images that you are displayed here carefully. And then from the annotation section below, select one label uh, for this um, web page in the mainly column. So we want to identify what is the main function of this web page. For this one, let's see, it is in Spanish, but that cannot stop us. There is a comment section, but I would say the primary purpose um, is giving some information here. So um, that means I will select inform as the primary purpose. Then the tool automatically uh, suggests that uh, it doesn't have any of these other functions. However, we also want to keep track of what might be secondary uh, function of, of this web page. And since we saw that there is a discussion section at the bottom here, we want to uh, select discuss as a secondary function. So in this examples here, we also provide some uh, further clarification of when you should choose mainly or also for each of the six categories of web pages. Once you are satisfied with this, uh, Notation of the web page. You, okay, I should probably make the window a little bit bigger. Yeah, then the layout is nicer. Uh, you click this blue button here, and then you move on to the next example. So I will only annotate this one for now. Once you are finished, you can click this Save CSV button, which gives you a file named Annotations, then uh, your group ID. We, we cannot see that window. It's just a black box. Ah. Okay, no worries, but uh, that is what you will get. And you save this file to your computer once you are finished with all of these annotations. And then you upload it in Moodle in the answer to exercise 6a here. So you click on submission to exercise 6a. Okay, I can't do this because I'm not a member of any group. Let me quickly save this for the purpose of this uh, experiment. Then I can add a submission and uh, place this file that, oh, that I didn't download now, but this is where the CSV file that you download from the annotation tool would go. So if you make a mistake uh, selecting your group number up here, you can click this delete all button, but this will reset everything to the beginning. So it make will sure also you delete your annotation, right. so be careful. Yes, it, exactly. It will delete everything that you did. Um, Yes, but we will also, of course, see whether the file matches your group number in Moodle. So you can't really cheat here. What if I click on save CSV early before I'm finished? I can do that just to be on the safe side, you, right? You can do that, and then you will only get the partial annotations yeah. that you did. That's just so there's that a good reason I mean, for this. I, 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 there, there's good reason for this. Save often, yes. save early. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's the one thing. And the second thing is that you are working together in groups. And each group um, gets one uh, of these things. So in order to allow you to make it easier, um, if you are, so I, I, since I just saw the question in the chat here, how to know what is your group number. If you are a Weimar student, you might not know yet, but it will be explained later. If you are a Leipzig student, uh, it was explained last week. And there is a recording on the Moodle of that session. So you can review that. Yeah, so, so when you enter uh, your you group number, um, you should check that 
everybody on the team sees the same web pages because the group member determines which pages you'll get to see. So if uh, some of your team members see a different web pages in the annotation tool, then check if you enter the correct number. Yes. So um, there's another will question. my group partner to be able to continue on it later? So the um, tool is independently for every individual person, but we have provided a way for you to easily collaborate. And that is, um, you see here, this uh, current task that you're working on. So every group has to do 100 of these. And uh, with the help of this step setting here, you can uh, select how uh, many steps you want to scroll to, through this list of web pages. So if I set this to 30 and then click right, then I go to task 31. And uh, then I set it back to one and then I can go through from 31, 32 and so on. So our suggestion is to work together in groups is that you agree who starts at which number and then uh, for example, the first person goes from task one to task 33 and the second person from 34 to 66, I guess. And the third uh, person starts at 67 and until the end. And everyone, when they get to their agreed endpoint, they click save CSV, download the file containing only this uh, subset of the annotations and upload it in the usual place. Yeah, you can either upload three CVC files or concatenate them together, but then you might, yeah. might want to remove the first line from the other ones. Right. Okay. Another question. Um, the, for now, we are planning to have the labs always online. Depending on how the virus situation develops, we might uh, do additional local office hours, but this is um, not likely or certain at this point. But I don't see the problem with the. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So I don't see the problem with the fast PC. We um, are actually allowing you to run some code on our infrastructure. So all you really need to be able to run on your own machine is a web browser. Although I would even suspect that most of the machine learning exercises should be operational on any laptop or yes. PC that you might have. Yes, that's true. There are anyways not very strict hardware requirements. Okay, so this um, is the first part of exercise six. Yeah, further maybe on, on maybe one additional thing, yeah. which is also yeah. in the annotation guidelines. Do you only look at what you're seeing? So if this is an Amazon page, don't select uh, if there's a that it wants to to sell you stuff right away. Because if it's the Amazon help page, then it's an informative page and not a page that wants to sell stuff. So in general, you have to submit each exercise only once per group. For this thing, in order for you to be able to split up the work, uh, we are making an exception such that everyone can submit a file individually. But you can also submit one together for the group if that is preferred. So for this one exercise, both is possible. You should always use the Moodle for your respective university. And this site is linked from the Moodle. Yes. Okay, so just to make this clear again from the Leipzig Moodle, it is also linked. It happens to go to the same place in this case. Okay, if there are no further questions on this, I will go on to the task number B from the programming exercise, which is where you actually do some first programming. So for the task A, what we did was produce the ground truth for this machine learning problem. For the task B, we will begin to put together um, the representation. So your job here now is to implement a few simple Python functions that take the HTML code of a web page as input and as output produce a number that can serve as a feature to characterize this web page for the purpose of a machine learning model. We have some ideas here of what these functions might do. So a very simple thing could be to count the number of characters in the page in the 
entire HTML code. There's also an uh, example implementation of this first idea, which is very simple in Python. You just call that in. So um, yeah, you should name your functions feature underline and then some descriptive name. And uh, you can pick any three ideas from your list or even uh, from this list, or you can even come up with your own. There's a, a lot of flexibility in this regard. Here. And they, can, they are allowed to be more complicated than this. I will actually um, go to our Jupyter. I have to switch to a different screen share to elaborate a bit on this first example of what a feature that you are supposed to implement could look like. So um, I will later briefly explain what this uh, Python notebook interface uh, is and how it works. For now, just consider um, this is a Python expression that uh, defines a string containing the uh, code for an HTML page, a very simple one that just has a title, a metadatum, and a simple sentence in the body text, and that is all. And then I am defining the same function that is also given as an example on the exercise worksheet here, which takes some value HTML and returns the length of it. And if I apply this to this uh, test HTML variable that I just defined, I get the result 165, which is the number of characters in this string here. So um, maybe we can come, come up with a different idea. Let's say we want to uh, not count the number of characters, but the number of space delimited tokens. So I will call this feature token count. This again will take some HTML as input. So write a proper comment and um, to do this in Python. And again, for those of you who are completely new to Python, there will be a tutorial next week where we um, go over some of these ideas in a bit more detail. So we have the method dot split on Python strings and this returns a list. And if we give this to the length function, then it gives us the number of elements in this list. And um, if we apply this to our HTML string, Ah, okay, this is, should be in test HTML, of course, because we are in the global scope now. And this gives us 19. So that would be uh, this thing, and then this thing, and then this thing, and then this thing, and so on. So it's good here, it splits on any uh, space on the line breaks as well as on this uh, space character here. Okay. Are there questions regarding this programming exercise. Uh, as mentioned on the worksheet, it is fine to use external libraries. Um, for this first one, the suggestion is to keep it simple, but if you have Python experience, you can also make it complex. We are actually, we are happy if we see some diversity of different features that people implement. You can use it, but it is not a strict requirement. You should um, upload your code in uh, HTML format. This is because that is uh, the lowest common denominator of what the Moodle accepts as input. But uh, if you have a Python file, you can simply rename it to HTML and that's fine. Right, yes, you can. Yeah. Yes. Final if question. you want to work on your local machine, you can use whatever you want, of course how to get access to Jupyter Hub. So the Leipzig people already got an introduction last week and the Weimar people will get an introduction to how to access this resource very soon, right after we are yes. done with this exercise sheet. Yes, and actually we are done with it now. Um, I will maybe briefly wait if there are any further questions on this exercise or any others on this sheet. And if not, then um, this concludes this part of the uh, lab class. Thumbs up for head content, very nice. Shall, okay. I stop, um, shall I stop the recording? Uh, one, maybe one uh, final thing that I've already said, but I will repeat it. The submissions for this exercise sheet are due uh, the evening of Monday, the 16th of November.